Hey everyone, this is Kurt Smith. I'm just going to go over the Roid Ribbit Rig and just go through the controls and the functionality of it. You'll notice that I have the sliders up here on the right. I'm going to be messing with those as I go through this, and you'll also be having these sliders open and controlling those as you animate it. So if I take the cog controller here, represented by the by the ring with four arrows on the side, that'll go ahead and move the upper body with IK legs. The legs are switchable between world and local, so right now you can see they're in world, so the heels aren't going to move. I've got stretch on the legs, so when you pull out, it's just going to stretch, but if you get close enough for the IK to bend the legs and it's going to go ahead and do that. But I can easily switch these legs over to local if I take this local control in the back represented by this green ball. I can go ahead and keyframe that and then switch the slider over to local. So you see left heel local world. Switch that over to local. Now as I move this cog controller that leg is going to stay with it. So you can see the right is in world, left is in local. If I still want to move that leg in local space I can just take that green local control on the back here and I can position the leg in IK just as if it was in world space. But it'll just stay locked with the cog controller, so anywhere I move that, it's going to move the leg. The knee controls are also world and local switching. Right now I've got the left knee in local, so I'll take this directional bone here, and I'll be able to turn the knee wherever I want it to point. I could also take the diamond here, keyframe that, and now switch the left knee into world, and it's going to stay in that point. So wherever I move the body, that control is going to stay in the world, and that knee is going to always be pointing at that direction. You can see that the right is in local, and the left is in world, so the right's going to move with the body, the left is not. For the foot, I have a very simple foot control setup with a lot of power behind the control set. So you can see I can take the ball on the toe area here, and that'll rotate from the tip of the toe. And I can take the ball back by the ankle here, and that'll be the rest of the control for this foot rig. So I can move it up in the Y to bend the foot. I can move it in the Z to bend the toe. I can rotate it in the heading to rotate from the ball of the foot. The bank is going to bank from side to side, and the pitch is going to be my foot roll. I've got a secondary hips control here, so I can move those hips around independently of the cog controller, and I can also rotate the hips as well to get more control over the animation there. I've also got secondary butt controls here, so if I need to change how this body deforms, I could take that bone, rotate it, move it around, scale it, whatever I need to do. Same with the chest here. I could scale it, I could rotate it, and I can move it just as I would for the control for the butt. For the arms, I have FKIK switching based on the slider here. Right now it's in FK mode, so it's going to move with the upper body, and my FK controls are going to be these nulls here, so this one for the shoulder is going to be your for rotation. If I wanted to move this, you'll see that the position handles are locked off here, but if I hit the up arrow key to go to its offset, which is represented by this box in the center of that control, I can move that controller to get any extra bit of control out of that area. I can also use this as a rotational offset, so if I get into gimbal lock, like if I were in a situation like this, and I needed a control to go this way, I can hit the up arrow key, and now I have that control. The ring on the elbow is going to be the elbow control, which I can rotate in the heading, as well as move anywhere I need for any extra bit of animation or control. If I hit the down arrow key again, that'll go to my hand offset, also represented by a box in the center of the control, just like the shoulder. And I can take this and move that to move the hand about and get stretch in the arm. I could also rotate this, and the main hand controller, which is not movable but rotatable, is going to rotate my hand. And I have that offset, which is the parent of this control, just in case I need that extra handle for rotation. If I wanted to switch this over into IK mode, I could simply keyframe the box control here and then switch the controller into IK mode. So left arm FK to IK. Now as I move the body, that hand is going to be staying there and it's going to be locked in IK mode. So now my rotation for IK, as well as the position for the arm, is going to be based solely by this control. And I can very easily switch back into FK mode. For where my elbow is pointing, just simply take the shoulder FK control and rotate it in the bank. And that'll point my elbow the direction I need it to be facing. I can easily get this back into FK mode by right-clicking on the shoulder offset, which I can make sure I have selected by going into front face wire, and keyframing all of those selected items keyframing the IK control in all channels, and then switching it back to FK mode. And now it'll move with the body and be back into full FK. For the fingers, I have these controls floating on the top, which work just as the bones would. You can also move these in the Z and get stretch in the fingers. For the spine and the neck, I have these controls in the back. The gap in the middle separates the neck controls from the spine controls, which I have selected now. I can rotate these spine controls. I can also move them to get stretch in the body, and the rotation will still work. I can also do the same with the neck, so I can rotate these, as well as move them to stretch them out. For the head motion, I'm going to need to select the last control with the spine control shape, hit the up arrow key to go to my offset, which is another box inside the head, and that's going to be my movement for the head. 
itself. And it'll also work as an offset for rotation, the same way that the shoulder and the hand would work. I also have a head float control, which is symbolized by the orange ball control here. You'll see that now as I rotate the body, that head is going to stay locked with the body and be pointing wherever that body faces. If I wanted the head to be pointing this way, regardless of the motion of the body, I can simply keyframe this control, switch the head flow to the on position, and now I can rotate the body and move the body around, and that head is always going to be looking at that one spot, which I can change by rotating the head float control. So now he'll be looking in this direction, regardless of where the body is rotated or positioned. And to get this back into local, I can simply keyframe the local control and then switch the head into the off. And now it's going to rotate with the body again. For the face, I've added some simple controls. These semicircle controls on the bottom and the top of the eyelids are going to be your eyelid controls. And if I take both of these at the same time and right click and pull down in perspective, it's going to blink the eye for me. I've also got these orange ball controls on top of the eyelids themselves. And rotation is going to change the direction that the eyes are facing, as well as the expression in the eyebrows. And I can also move these if need be to get stretch in the eye. I've also got these joint controls for the nostrils, which I can move, rotate, and scale, as well as secondary controls for the belly, which I can make visible by turning the secondary controls slider on. Now you'll see these ball controls for the belly up here. I can move and rotate and scale these to get any desired effect or shape of the belly that I need. And these secondary controls, as well as the secondary controls in the chest and in the butt area, and also the eyelid controls can simply be set back to base position by zeroing out the position, rotation, and adding 1, 1, 1 to the scale. So if I wanted these to go back into base, I can go to, to position, zero that out, rotation, and zero that out. Now they're back into base position. And for scale, I could just type in 1 in X, Y, and Z scale, and it will go back to base position as well. And last but not least, I have the slider to control the main controls visibility. So if I turn both control visibility off, as well as bone x-ray, I can make a very simple and clean preview to preview my animation for this guy. Lastly, if I wanted to load this character into another scene using load items from scene, I could very simply load up a new scene. And using load items from scene, I could load this guy in, make sure that I get all my objects, and I also need to make sure that I get all of my master plugins, which I can easily do by double clicking on master plugins and then just hit OK. Now the rig will load in fine with the ability to use the sliders that I have here as well. So there you have it. That is the Roid Ribbit rig. So have fun and enjoy.